All right, you guys, we need to talk because what is happening right now in the AI industry is insane. This isn't just a talent war anymore. Mark Zuckerberg, after getting basically humiliated in the AI race, has launched what I can only describe as a hostile takeover of the entire field. This is not about competition. It's an intellectual heist on a scale we have never seen before with a single and frankly terrifying goal to build a super intelligence under his exclusive control. And today, I'm gonna break down exactly how his evil plan is unfolding and why the people who built our current AI systems are absolutely freaking out. And to really get how wild this is, you have to hear what OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, said just days before this whole thing blew wide open. He was on a podcast, trying to play it cool, acting like Meta's recruiting attempts were no big deal. Listen to these famous last words. Can, we, can I ask you about the whole uh, meta scale? Thing? Of course. So uh, what's, the, what's the situation there? Look, I've, I've heard that meta thinks of us as their biggest competitor. And, you know, I think it is rational for them to keep trying. Their current AI efforts have not worked as well as they've hoped. And I respect, like, being aggressive and continuing to try new things. And, and, I, and I, again, given that I think this is, like, rational, I expect that if this one doesn't work out, they'll keep trying new ones after that. I remember once hearing Zuck talk about how, you know, Google in the early days of Facebook, it was rational for them to try social, even though it was like clear to people at, at Facebook that that was not going to work. And I feel a little bit similar here, but they started making these like giant offers to, uh, you know, a lot of people on our team, mm -hmm. um, you know, like $100 million signing bonuses, more than that comp per year. This is crazy. Uh, and... I'm actually, it is crazy. I'm really happy that at least so far, uh, none of our best people have decided to take them up on that. None of our best people. He said that with a straight face. He was selling the idea of missionaries versus mercenaries, the noble mission-driven researchers at OpenAI who would never be swayed by mere money versus the hired guns at a soulless corporation like Meta. It's a great soundbite. The only problem, it was a fantasy. Because at the exact same time Altman was delivering that line, his company was bleeding out. The truth wasn't confidence. It was chaos. We know this because of a bombshell leaked memo obtained by Wired from OpenAI's own chief research officer, Mark Chen. He sent a message to his staff that sounds less like a corporate update and more like a distress call. He said he had a, quote, visceral feeling as if someone has broken into our home and stolen something. Let that sink in. This isn't the language of healthy competition. This is the language of a company that feels violated, a company that is watching its most valuable assets, the very minds that built its empire, being systematically carried out the front door. It exposes the massive gulf between the calm public image and the frantic behind-the-scenes panic. So this begs the question, what kind of weapon was Zuckerberg wielding? What kind of offer is so powerful it can shatter the loyalty at what was supposed to be the world's most ideologically pure AI lab? The answer isn't just a big salary. It's a financial nuke, a number so absurd it fundamentally changes the equation of a person's life. As Mark Zuckerberg staffs up Meta's new super intelligence lab, he's offering top-tier research talent pay packages of up to $300 million over four years, with more than $100 million in total compensation for the first year, Wired has learned. Let me break that down, because the details are crucial. $100 million in the first year. For context, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, OpenAI's single biggest financial backer, made $79 million last year. Zuckerberg is offering individual researchers more than the CEO of Microsoft makes just to get them to switch their Slack status. And here's the most diabolical part of the strategy. Sources say that a huge chunk of this compensation, the stock, vests immediately. This is genius in a dark Machiavellian way. It removes all the risk. There's no golden handcuffs, no four-year wait. It is an instant, life-altering, nine-figure wire transfer. It's an offer not to work. It's an offer to retire your entire bloodline. This financial firepower is the core of Zuckerberg's two-step plan. Step one, buy the generals. That's exactly what he did with the jaw-dropping $14.3 billion investment in scale AI. He didn't just want their data. 
he wanted their prodigy CEO, Alexander Wang, to lead his new army. And step two, with the generals in place, open the war chest and buy the soldiers. So did Zuck's evil plan actually work? Did he get the best people that Altman was so sure he couldn't touch? I gotta be honest, the list of people he poached is a straight-up casualty list for OpenAI and Google, and it's absolutely wild. Okay, let me break it down. Steering this new super intelligence project, this MSL lab, is Meta's new chief AI officer, Alexander Wang, working side by side with the former CEO of GitHub, Nat Friedman. They're at the top of the pyramid, but look at the brain trust they've just acquired. Let's just start with the raid on OpenAI. First, he grabs Trapid Bansal. This is the guy who pioneered reinforcement learning on chain of thought. That's the secret ingredient that gives these models reasoning, the ability to think step by step. It's one of the most critical breakthroughs in the field, and now that expertise resides at Meta. But it doesn't stop there. Remember that GPT-40 voice, the one that sounded so incredibly human it freaked everybody out? Its co-creator, Su Xiaobi, gone, poached. The mastermind behind GPT-40's incredible image generation, Hu Wen Cheng, she's gone too. And then, and you guys, this is the crown jewel of the operation, Sheng Zhizhao, a co-creator of ChatGPT and GPT-4, the foundational models. And you think he stopped there? Of course not. He just went right across the street to Google DeepMind, their biggest rival, and pulled off the same maneuver. He plucked Jack Ray, the pre-training tech lead for Gemini. And just to round out the collection, he went over to Anthropic, the other major player, and brought back Joel Pobar, a top-tier expert on inference, the very thing that makes these models run fast and efficient. This is a clean sweep. He took the foundational architect from OpenAI, the lead trainer from Google, and the efficiency expert from Anthropic, and put them all on the same payroll. His payroll. This is the reality of Zuckerberg's evil plan. He didn't just hire a few people. He surgically extracted the institutional knowledge, the trade secrets locked away in the minds of the world's most brilliant AI researchers, and consolidated them. He has created an AI super team, an unprecedented concentration of talent, now working in a new organization with a chillingly direct name, Meta Super Intelligence Labs. We're no longer talking about hypotheticals. We're talking about a very real, very funded, and now very staffed project to build artificial super intelligence. So what happens if he succeeds? What happens if Mark Zuckerberg, a man who has faced relentless global criticism over privacy, misinformation, and the very real-world impact of his platforms on society and democracy is the one who gets to the finish line first. Can we as a civilization trust one man and one company with an intelligence that could dwarf our own? An ASI could solve humanity's greatest problems, disease, climate change, poverty, but in the wrong hands, or even in the hands of someone with good intentions but a flawed track record, it could become the most powerful tool of control ever created. Think about it. An ASI controlled by a single entity could manipulate global markets, influence elections with surgical precision, create autonomous weapon systems we can't comprehend, or even rewrite the rules of our digital reality. What happens when the person who controls the world's most dominant social platforms also controls the world's most dominant intelligence. In that scenario, Mark Zuckerberg wouldn't just be a CEO. He would be something far more powerful, a digital dictator with the ability to shape human perception and behavior on a scale that would make historical tyrants look amateurish. This is the real-world consequence of this talent war. It's a high-stakes gamble for the future of humanity, and Zuckerberg is playing with house money. He has assembled the team. He has provided the resources. Now, the only question that matters is what happens if he actually pulls it off? Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this a necessary move in a competitive market, or is this a dangerous consolidation of power that we should all be worried about? And if this breakdown gave you a new perspective on the battle for our AI future, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the technology that is shaping our world.